Hello, hello. I am on, Lindsay. I'll see you in the room. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I was wondering, I'm sitting on the Zoom call. I'm wondering, two people, really? <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it was me and two more people in the waiting room. And I'm like, oh, over to the public, different link. Um, so that's the reason why I wasn't here on time. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. So the phone link is working, but my desktop link isn't coming on. Oh, so let me tell you, go to Zoom on your desktop. And I'm going to tell you what the Zoom ID is for this call. And then you can enter that. And then you should be able to enter. Okay. Let me just open that on my phone. I got it. Let me to tell it to you. Awesome. Thank you, Christy. Yes. It is 890-9117-8786. And Lindsay, do we have Gamos team here to open it? Yes. It's supposed to have them. They're always here. Do you know who's representing today? Because I know, I know Gamo is enjoying a nice cruise. Hopefully he's not sick like I was last week. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. Everybody, but, uh, spring break right now, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, they are. So I'm not sure who is representing. If somebody's here from the Gamo team, please talk up. Because I'm not sure who's supposed to be. I don't see them, any of the Delta team. Yeah, so maybe they aren't here. Well then, our speaker is here today. I do have two, well, one quick announcement about um, Gamo's team or National Mortgage. I got yeah. a message from uh, Mariella, which is Randy Gamo's um, Christy, pretty much. Yeah. And yep, they we just released, and I'll post this in the Team Go Go group um, later on. Uh, National Mortgage now is open in two more states. They're open in Wisconsin and Iowa. Oh. So be sure to update that on the website, and I'll post this in the in the group. But yeah, they just opened That's up awesome. two states. Yeah. That's awesome because I just saw someone on here, then I think she is Kelly. Are you in Wisconsin? Minnesota. Montana. You were really close. Montana. Dang it, I was really close. Um, okay, well, let's get started. You guys ready? And look what I see. Hi, Herb. I'm so excited you're with the EXP. Yay, I know. Years later. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Hey, um, one of the things I think everybody can say um, about joining is I wish I joined earlier. Raise your hand if you feel the same. <laughs> see, no matter when we join, we all like, oh, I wish I joined earlier. Right? So at least you joined. So that, that's awesome. And Melissa Albert. Everybody say hi to Melissa. This is her first week with us. Well, second, but first open yeah, to the public. Second, second. First open to the public. And then Anna Ward, she's also brand new with us. So um, thank you everyone for not brand new agents. They both solid rock star. Melissa is a $21 million, $28 million producer, um, but new with us. So let's get started. Usually we do start with the mortgage minutes. Um, we, I guess, don't have mortgage minutes for today. I guess Gamble can take a week off. We'll let them, right? Once a year. Yeah, um, spring break with the kids. So yeah. I guess we'll go right into um, our guest. Beth, are you here? I, I am here. Good morning. Oh, there you are. Okay, I didn't see you on the on the screen for a second. So uh, I'm going to introduce you, and then I'm going to give you the floor to help oh. all of all of our agents. So Beth Manning is one of the best humans I have met, and thank God that I have met her. Right. So I met her on Instagram, just like all of all of you all. Right. And uh, I remember the first time I physically met her, I was physically in the same space with her at uh, Tiffany Topi's uh, house, which by the way, it's Tiffany Topi's birthday today. So if you have a minute, take the time oh, of the day and wish her happy birthday. Um, I just tortured her with my beautiful voice and I sang her happy birthday as I do to <laughs> you all if I sponsored you, right? And um, so I'm I'm there and Beth is arriving later and, and she's coming in and I'm opening the front door because I saw her Uber pulling up and she's walking in and we chitty chatting. And like, I don't know, seven minutes later, I was like, hold on a minute. We never met. <laughs> like, this is like the 
first time we actually physically met, right? But we both felt, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Beth, but I think we both felt like we actually known each other. Yes. Right? Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that crazy? Like we get to spend yeah. all this amazing, to me, it feels like quality time online. Uh, I feel like we spend so much time with each other that we actually feel like we know each other, even though some of you, we never actually met, right? I do look forward to the day to meet. Um, so Beth joined us from Keller Williams. And um, the year before she joined us, she was a $2.7 million producer. And then now she's a $10 million producer. So she has taken her business from agent in the everyday grind to CEO to have time um, to work on your business. And the idea today is for her to share what she has learned um, so she can help us all to learn something new to how to look at our businesses as businesses. And um, she also has an amazing husband all the way from Thank Italy. You. He is amazing. God knows he comes up with all my shenanigans. That's that's yeah. awesome. So if I remember correctly, your goal is to retire that handsome fella. Awesome. I'm sure. but, that's what we're working on. Yep. That's awesome. And then what's going to help you with that is the 29 agents that you already have in your organization. That's right. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. Um, things that you learn only work if you do, right? So today, if you are here and there's a message that you needed to hear um, that Bat has to deliver to us today, then make sure that when you go home and you have time to work on your not go home because you probably are home, but when you like have time to actually look at it and think about how you need to implement it into your business, that you actually take action and you implement it into your business because Otherwise, you can keep learning. If we're not implementing what we're learning to take ourselves to the next level, then it's a waste of everybody's time. It's a waste of your time. So if you show up, make sure that you implement. So let's get started. Beth, take the floor. Thanks, Gogo. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see you guys. So um, welcome. If you're new to the Team Gogo community, I think I see a few new faces. I see Fabi there from California who popped in. You know, one of the things that we always like to do, we're really good at referring each other business. We really take pride in doing that. So if you haven't already, where your cute little faces on the uh, screen, hit the three buttons, put in your name in the city where you're from. I can tell you when I'm on these meetings, I am always looking. A, who's engaged because I'm going to refer business to them. Probably not going to refer business if you're not engaged. And then B, it's just nice to see where everyone is from around, around the country. So welcome. I just want to uh, tell you, so this hour is going to be a, a little interactive here at the Team GoGo community. We really are um, a big fan. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I have a stand-up desk and I'm going to sit down now, so I got to crank it down. So excuse me. <laughs> You guys are welcome. To I love you, Beth. You. You're great. I didn't want you to be like on the spot as you're cranking and cranking. It's like, you're what is she doing? That yeah. is weird. You're, okay. good. you're all good. I love it. Okay, good. So yeah. So one of the things that we like to do here is we pour into each other. And every Wednesdays, we have production meeting, rain or shine. And so before I kind of get started officially with the slideshow, I just want to tell you that's one of the reasons how I've been able to grow my business in one year from 2.7 to 10 mi million. It is because of the people that I've associated with. It's because I plugged into every single training. Wednesdays is production. Thursdays are our tech training. And Fridays, for those of you that are um, doing a different kind of business model, is our agent attraction. I attend all of the events I can. And I also like to um, randomly reach out to people that are doing better than me and have conversations. None of that is comfortable. Um, I'm actually nervous as I'm speaking right now, but I can tell you that the more nervous you are and the more you're putting yourself out there, you too can more than double your business if that's what you want to do. Okay, Let, let's roll. Let's go ahead and start the slideshow. show. So I just want to say thanks in advance. I have Robbie Kabaz out of Michigan, who's going to be part of my panel a bit later today. And I also have Kelly Armstrong out of Billings, Montana. Both of them have, have applied this CEO formula of measuring and going from reactive to proactive, which I think is going to give you guys some awesome tips on how you want to do your biz. Okay, let me go ahead and share. 
Does anyone else get nervous when, when, when they speak? I get nervous on every Tech Thursday, every single Tech Thursday, every time I speak, <laughs> all the time. And yeah, that's why I like to be behind the scenes. So don't worry. I literally even get like short of breath as I'm speaking. You'll, I, now yeah, you know too. that. Yeah. Now that you know that, you'll be able to catch that. So all the time, all yeah. the time. I can't, you know, I can't feel my tongue sometimes when I'm on stages, <laughs> right? It's just like the yeah. weirdest sensation. But again, guys, it's the uncomfortability. I know I need to be here. I know I have a me yeah. message to share. I know many of you need to hear the message and apply the tools. Mm -hmm. um, and I do it to grow myself professionally. Love okay. It. So if you have questions, drop them in chat. I'm totally open to just you unmuting and asking questions as well. This is what we do here. So a little bit about me. I, I live in Salt Lake City, not really from here. Uh, a California girl that's um, made my way to Italy for about seven years and landed back in Utah, landed in Utah with my imported Italian stallion husband. So Paolo and I live here. Um, this is my fifth year in real estate. I made a five-year, oh boy, I made a, mi a midlife career change going from tech and being in business development. We did visual effects, animation software. All the sexy graphics you see as you're watching the NBA go across the screen or MTV, if you see all the wild graphics. I mean, those are the, the software that my companies have developed and we sold. Uh, that was kind of my world. Uh, 10 million in sales. I'm working very hard to build a referral business. I have some numbers that I've wrapped around that at 30,000 in referral last year. Um, I have a certified coaching certificate with the success, uh, success magazine, success enterprises. I'm also an EXP certified mentor and hubby. And I spend a little time between Italy and Utah. Our life is super simple. I like to vet vegetable garden. I like chickens and we just kind of do our thing here. So I'm an advocate for women and women's causes. And I'm always looking for a way to make more money while doing less, especially as a 56 year old woman now, which blows me away. Um, so these are the things I'd like to touch base with you as well. There's so many interesting opportunities in real estate. It's not just transactional, um, but let's roll here. Sorry, guys, I'm having a little problem with my mouse. I got to move our faces. There we go. Okay. All righty. So today we're going to talk about really being more proactive in your business and taking a step out, an aerial view of your business and looking at it from not just a transactional piece, but really as a tool that can help you build the lifestyle you want. Um, I can tell you, as I mentioned before, that's the trajectory of where I've headed, where I'm heading with a lot more really interesting things to come. How many of you here have been in your business um, are under like five-year mark? Could you raise your hand? Bryce, thank you. John, thanks. Javier, hi, Javier. Okay. Is there any of you that are dissatisfied? Hi, Kate, Beth, thanks. Anyone, anyone, is there anyone that's dissatisfied where they are in the business right now? Jennifer? I love it. You all are so satisfied. Anna, okay. Okay, good. Well, here's what I want to tell you. The dissatisfaction is going to help you move to different places where you want to go. Um, you know, there's two ways to look at your business. You can look at it as being a, an employee or you can look at it as really being a CEO. When I moved to eXp and more than doubled my business, it's when I put the hat on as being a CEO. I really wanted to understand how to grow business without making myself crazy. I wanted to understand how to scale. I wanted to understand how to get to prior, higher pr price points. And I wanted to understand uh, how to create the life that I wanted. So you all came from probably an employee employer world at one point in your life, even as a younger person. And we all know, we all know an employee will clock in and clock, clock out. An employee leaves problems at the door. 
Boy, those good old days, right? You walk out the door, you leave it all. Well, in today's real estate market, being a CEO requires you a little more depth and breadth of really understanding your business and really caring for the well-being of not just yourself, because we all know we can die of burnout, but really caring for clients, the business growth, the personal growth, the profitability and scale. And what I can tell you is I had, I was unable to think like this two years ago because I was just running in circles, reaction, reactionary person. I just need a deal. I need a deal. Can any of you relate to that today? I mean, it's, it's a hard place, place to be in, you know, but one of the things we're going to talk through is a little formula to help guide you out of that chaos and a little bit into looking at your business in a different way. So for me, it's really important for me to be the CEO of my business that first year that I jumped here, that I wanted four very important things in my life. I wanted to control my time. I did say control. I think some realtors think you can't, but I do control my time. I wanted a business lifestyle. I wanted just to be able to have real estate be part of my life instead of my life all be about real estate, right? So, you know, if we're going to events for family or if, you know, going to things, if we're traveling to Italy, I mean, yeah, you bet I'm going to go stop in a real estate office and talk to them about real estate. I also wanted consistent revenue as a CEO of my business. I didn't want to be the reactive employee that was running around paycheck after paycheck. All my energy there, instead of energy trying to organize my database, organize my campaigns, which work for me, right? That was important to me. And referral business. I really saw a big opportunity in referral business where I could refer money out. I could refer business out, which took one hour of my time which probably paid me minimum three or four thousand dollars. I figured that was a good hourly rate. So referral business was something that was really important to me as well. So in this hour, I really want to encourage you to kind of slow down and to take a step back. And I think it's hard. Some of you are still doing emails and, and doing business at this moment. And I can tell you again, when I had this hour of training is when I really tuned it all out and I invested the time in myself. And I want to encourage you, whether it's today, whether it's tonight, whether it's sometime this week, to actually start with the end game in mind. And what I'm saying is not anything you haven't heard before. It's just a different voice and a cute face, right? So start with the end game in mind. How do you want your business to look? What do you want it to look like? How do you want to be in your business? You know, how do you want to act? A lot of this is called mental mind mapping. And professional athletes do this. Um, executives and CEOs of major corporations do this with large, you know, very successful coaches. But really sit back and think about what do I want to change in my business? How do I want to be? What do I want my business to look like? right? Imagine it, visualize it. You know, some of us do what's called vision maps or vision boards, right? That's part of the process, right? Getting it on paper in front of you, but also understanding, thinking, feeling with your whole body, you know, what that feels like, you know, how do you or will you engage in your community as, uh, as, a, as the CEO of your organization? You know, I think sometimes, guys, this is a step where people like la 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 la. They just let it slide off. But I know this was a very important part of my business and my and my growth. So back in 2022, I did this myself. I did a, a vi vision board. I was very. I, you know, I went kind of global. What do I want? I want more personal connections. I know I need to shift. I need to grow. I need to go. Daily habits. 
So I had a global view and I also got specific with some numbers, right? This is what you're gonna wanna do, right? Start, start bigger, start more global view and then kind of chunk down with some specific numbers. So as the CEO of your business, what's important to you, right? So you saw my four things. So what, what is important? How do you want to run your business? What kind of revenue do you want? Christy, are you watching the chat for me today or someone else? Yep, we got it. Okay, yeah. And if anyone wants to unmute and share, would love to hear it. The more interactive, the better. You're engaging more senses. You'll learn more and retain more. Well, my goal for this year is not only to put actual systems in place, and for me, it's even basic systems. Like <laughs> I was watching GoGo -Go one time, and when I mentioned that I was doing all of my finances on an Excel spreadsheet, all I heard was, oh, hell no. <laughs> so when I finally picked up QuickBooks and connected it to my account and everything was in there, I was like, oh, hallelujah. So... <laughs> Well, and, and I think that's, and I think that's interesting. It's Macy, right? Did yes. I see that? Correctly? Yeah. I think this is the interesting part where people could hit snooze and snore, yes. right? But I got to tell you exactly what you're doing is you taking responsibility for every single dollar coming in and out of your business. That's a CEO. Yes. This is boring as hell. Yes. Who is getting joy here? But that's the type of discipline and the strength you need to build your CEO muscle. So congratulations to you. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, so define what's important to you. So sure, uh, the accounting part is not necessarily going to make you money today, but I can tell you over time that accounting part is going to make you money. That's being strategic. That's being a CEO. That's putting structure and tools in place to help you scale and grow your business. So when you have some time, gang, how do you want the business? Chunk it down, get specific, set some goals. We're not going to get into the SMART goals, but as, as some of us know, your goals should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and in a good timeline. I keep seeing Herb's face. Herb, I don't Herb, I don't know why you are the one that's popping up on my screen, but hi. <laughs> uh, hello, how are you? I, I don't know. I think because I, my desk is positioned so the light comes in just so it gets on my Maybe. eyes. There you and, go. And it, and it gives me that Batman kind of special feel, right? Uh, it's it's the spotlight. <laughs> the Herb's spotlight. So I do want to touch base on specifics. You know, last slide, we talked about global view, getting specific with your business. It's really important as a CEO, there's specificity and numbers in your business, right? This is a perfect example of how someone would lose $144,000 for not being specific. So let's look at the 24 deals at 200K. Someone says, I want to do 24 deals a year. I'm killing it this year. Yeah. Okay. Get specific in your number. Try and raise your average sale price. 24 deals at 200K is 144K. 24 deals at 300K is 216. 24 deals at a half a million is 288K in your pocket. Simple example. There's no broker cutting fees. I'm trying to keep the math easy. So as you see, getting specific and narrowing it down is exactly where you need to be. One of the reasons the first year that I went from 2.7 to 10 million is I doubled my average sale price. I was very specific. I didn't want to do more transactions. I needed a higher volume to make more money with the same transactions. Right. So again, let's be specific and let's nail that. So instead of talking about deals, this is a great example that just kind of break, breaks it down for us. How much money do you want to make? 
I never talk the number of deals. I don't know about you guys. If you do flip the switch, how much money do you want to make this year? Right. And this is just a very easy example of how to break it down if you don't know how to. You Can know? I add on to that, Beth, a little bit? Because yes. so many times in the industry, right, people are like, I just want to double what I did last year. And I remember one time I um, hear somebody asking, why? Because you want to work twice as hard. Right? No, you don't want to double the amount of work. You don't want to triple the amount of work. You want to double your income while you work less. Right? And that's why you have to be playing with these numbers. Because if you end up posting a $200,000 home on the market, you're going to get people that are shopping in the $200,000 price range. If you post a $750,000 home on the market, you are going to get people that are on the market for $750,000 homes, right? So it's in your, your income is in your control. Now, how much you work for that income, that's also in your control. If you don't stop, if you don't spend an hour on your business, because you're constantly busy working in your business, then you don't even have time to run the math. Then you're just running around for the next commission, no matter what that commission is. So your income is in your control, but you have to take the time to slow down and do the math. Thank you, Pat. And I, I love that, Gogo, because I think it's the hard, I think that's the hardest thing to do when you're first learning to be an entrepreneur and a CEO. The hardest thing for me, me to do was say, sorry, Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller, I need a time out to work, work some of the numbers out in my business. Would you find that to be true for you too, Gogo, when you first did that? No, I just feel like initially, right, we are in the grind. And you're so busy trying to make that next commission, right, that you're not even thinking about, like, you're not slowing down to take a picture to, of, of your future, right, to even be like, what am I running towards? Like, what am I trying to achieve? What is that end income goal? And what is the average price in, in my area? Then what is an average commission? Then how many transactions is that going to be? Now that I know how many transactions are going to be, how much time do I have left to the end of the year? I have nine yeah. months, okay. If I have to do 20 deal in nine months, how much is that in a month? Okay, now I know it's two and a half transactions a month. Then I don't know, I did not do the math. I just pulled the number from- yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, okay, now where are those transactions are going to come from? Then you stop and you look at the last five transactions you did. Where did they come from, right? And you're like, oh, they mostly come from open houses. Okay, guess where you're going to be spending your time for the next nine months in open houses. That's right. right. So you can do that. Or you can say, well, yeah, it's two and a half transactions at 300,000. But if I up my price range to 500, then I can get away with one transaction. One and a half or one and a quarter, whatever that is. Right. So you have to think about it. Not only um, I joined a group. Uh, it's called M1. It's more like a financial. It's to become a millionaire a few years ago. But yeah. I'm proud to say I'm a multimillionaire now. It worked. <laughs> that was a great group to join. Right. Um, great training. But in there, they said, if you don't know where it's coming from, you're going to look up one day and you will have no idea where it went. Ooh, so if you don't, powerful. right, because then I went through a phase of my career where I figured out how to make money, but I, we were still somehow an $89,000 credit card out. So it's important to figure out how to make money, but it's also important in that same time to learn what to do with it and to track it. So when you're doing your QuickBooks and you're doing these trackers, right, you not only want to track what's coming in, but you also want to track what's going out. There might be services and charges in your account that you signed up for it two years ago because it sounded like it was such a good idea and you're still paying $149 on it every single month and you haven't logged in two years ago, right? That's a whole other conversation we can say, but let's just talk about the income portion of it that Bath is breaking down here for you guys today. If the average price range in, in your neck of the woods is not $400,000 and you're not charging two and a half percent, right? You're charging 3% and the average is 700, then you need to do that math. Yes. This is an example, but you have to slow down enough to do the math to understand how much time do you have to spend and where to make that amount of money. So you're not just running around. It's like um, somebody said it this way. Imagine if you're in a bar, it's pitch dark and you're winking at the girl. <laughs> Is it is gonna work? Girl? <laughs> exactly. It's not gonna work because she doesn't know you're winking at her. It's pitch dark in there. You have no idea what's going on. It's it's dark in there. So if it's dark in your business because you don't know what's going on and you're throwing darts at it, hope it sticks, right? So you figure out the numbers and use this example that Beth has on the screen here to figure out what is what are your numbers. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, no, and 
I love that. And and I have to tell you, this is exactly why I love EXP. I have where I was before, we never had these types of entrepreneurial conversations. And this is crucial to growth. And here's what here's what I can tell you. We'll touch base a little more later. Your your business will grow to where your personal growth is. So let me repeat that. Imagine your business is a shadow and it follows you everywhere, right? As you're growing more, your business growth happens too. If you're not growing, you will be at the exact same place. Just saying. So all, all of this requires what we're all kind of discussing. And thanks for all of the... Um, Interesting chat notes. I mean, Sarah just broke down in her area, you know. Um, Kelly, that's great information. Like, here's the thing all of this requires us to do a little bit of change. And I can tell you, I get to change. And I want to repeat that you get to change. And some of you really want to change. Take that coat off and put on a new one because it's time now. So change is, is crucial to getting where you want to go. And we all know, again, this isn't like, you know, we've heard this a million times, what gets measured generally improves, right? Whether some of us are trying to drop some pounds, well, guess what? You got to know where you are and where, where you're going, right? So whether you're weighing in, your weighing date today, right? You know how much pounds you want to lose, right? Uh, whether some of you have kids, your kids are not doing great in school. Well, you know where they are. We're going to measure it and you know where you'd like them to be. And then from point A to point B, you put in some um, strategies and tools for that. Sarah, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I kind of just wanted to touch on um like you mentioned that I broke everything down. Another thing that helped me or is helping me, I guess, because I'm still within my first full uh, year of real estate and um, I was slower to start, but I'm starting to really see some momentum build now. And I kind of feel overwhelmed, like, okay, cool. I can see this goal, you know, coming to light, but how do I grow it even more? Like, obviously the buck doesn't stop here, keep it going, but one thing that I've heard a couple people mention just in different meetings um, is like really utilizing a whiteboard. So I don't have a whiteboard at home, but I just bought two little of those white thicker um, sheets that like you, the post, post board, uh, the big post it notes. Yeah, I the poster boards. Them. I taped it to my wall and I just used it like a whiteboard and I put um, my closed deals, my uh, listings that I have pending deals and then clients that I'm focusing on. And it kind of really helped me be able to see all the clients that I've got to talk to and see which ones are more um, valuable, I guess, to spend my time really pouring more energy on, like who's really close to making that um, purchase or selling their home or doing both. So that's really helped me organize my thought process of how I grow from even my 3 million goal to maybe now a 5 million goal. Um, so great. Just making sure that I hit that goal. So that was a good tip that I got. Um, I just did that a couple of weeks ago and it's really helped me focus. And just the, even the simple texts like, Hey, hope all is well, like happy Monday. Hope you crush it this week. It doesn't have to be anything regarding you buying or selling your home, but just the top of mind, like, Hey, I'm here. If you need anything, or I saw this house, I had one girl who I knew from high school. I saw her at an open house and now I send her probably a house a week, just like Hey, I know you're not like super in dire mode to move, but I set up a search for her. And every time I see a new thing come on the market that I think she might like, I send it to her on Facebook. And I'm like, you know what? Whenever you're ready to move, I know I'm going to be that realtor you reach out to because I'm annoying you and you're going to appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, I just, I know, I just know that that's. Sarah, come on yeah. now. <laughs> I'm annoying. You're being in a professional. Nice way. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I will, and uh, I think all of those are great. I mean, these are, again, we're points in our business wherever we are. You're in your first year. And yeah. I see you all over Instagram with that podcast. I have, I have to tell you, <laughs> Thank you, congrats to you. But wherever you are, whatever the tool is, put tools in place, measure your progress. Yeah. Right. I'm going to kind of crank through these last uh, few slides in my message because I really want to bring on these other two guests who are doing some amazing things. So the CEO formula, guys, write this one down. Your goal plus your action plus new ways of doing business and measure. Goal plus action, try new things, measure. This is going to help you moving forward because we all know if you expect a different result and you're doing the same thing, you're just kind of an idiot. And I think there's a more eloquent quote than what I'm saying. <laughs> but we all know that. We can't expect But I love the way you put it. It's we'll nip them right in bud, right? At the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. But I like your spin on it, Beth. <laughs> you're idiots. If we don't change and we keep doing the same thing, we can't expect to have a different result. If you do this exactly what you did last year, you're going to have exactly what you got last year. Exactly. It's the same thing. And I would say for me, it was the try, try the whole, it's the third step of the formula, which is try something new. That's changed me a lot in my business. So again, if someone says, I don't have any leads, the, the question is, what's your goal? What action are you doing now? What new activity are you going to be trying? And let's measure. So I want to break this down real fast. And then I want to bring on our guests. So. Uh, the goal is to add 100 people to my database. I encourage people to not say, I want a deal. I'm, I tell them, let's get underneath the hood of the deal. You need people. And we know that real estate is a contact sport. It's more of a contact sport than football. Sorry, dudes. Be out there. Be meeting people. Get in the community, right? So if the goal is adding more people to your database, what's the action step? Well, Attend your kids' sporting events, give out your business card, do some open houses and do door knocking, attend the downtown farmer's market. Again, for Beth Manning, it's a lifestyle business. Okay, so what's the new activity then? Well, I'm going to start my What's Happening in Salt Lake City fa Facebook page. I'm going to invite people, hundreds of people, there's hundreds of people I don't even know on Facebook into that page. The new activity would be boosting posts, right? Whether they're my posts or colleagues. The new activity is committing to pop, pop buys and adding more people into the sphere, right? And then we're gonna measure, whoa, then we're gonna measure, right? And so the measurement for me is adding 10 people from those events, the kids' events, nine open house leads, two door knock leads, add 70 people, from this whole new um, community we created on Facebook, three Facebook uh, leads that were boosted, right? So 97 total leads were added. It feels like there's more um, oh, control over your business when you're measuring, when you're doing these entire type of exercises. So again, it's goal action step, try new things and measure, okay? I'm going to not do this one because I want to bring these other guys on. Okay, here we go. Kelly Armstrong. Kelly Armstrong is from Billings, Montana. Kelly, come on in. Where are you, girl? Well, hello there. Thank you for um, offering to be part of our training today. So we'd love to know a little bit about your goal, action step, try new things and measure and how it changed or affected you and your CEO beautiful hat there? <laughs> sure. Um, so I, I guess some background for me, I'm a broker in Billings, Montana. I owned a brokerage prior to coming over to eXp and I've been in the business about 10 years. So I feel like I have a decent foundation for how my business runs and, and how it works and just trying to scale time and also scale information the way that it's out. So for me, um, where I was in my business, you know, things were, things were moving, but we were starting to come up into like most people in, in your state of where you do business, you know, people are very curious now about real estate. And especially after COVID it's, Oh, should I buy now? Should I buy later? It, it's all, uh, 
kind of a guessing game in some way based on what headline you read that day, right? So um, one thing that I really wanted to dive into for my business was getting local information because it pertains locally, real estate is local, and um, getting local information out to my database and, and whoever else wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, that pertain to them. So one of the things that we started doing in September of 2021 was writing a weekly email that went out to our database. And that weekly email started to, I will, I'm going to preface this with, I would rather poke my eyeballs out than sit and call my database every day. So I wanted to find a way <laughs> to have genuine conversations with my clients and also like, let them know like, Hey, I'm in your corner in a professional advisor type way without having okay. to call them on the phone and having one-on-one -on -one conversations all over again. So talking about kind of like that scaling that time. Um, but then also so, for so them to Kelly I was, was going to excuse me. I'm sorry. Did you have a conscious goal or was the goal like, I just want to, was it more of a generic? I want to be there. It was, that it was, so our, my one message in my business, and I say our, cause I have a team of people that, that help me. Um, but our one message is, is that real estate agents are educated advisors. So the more that we can okay. step into that role, um, and be that for that, for our clients and for our potential new clients, that is the goal. So is embodying that. Um, the goal also was to save time, like, and just make sure like, hey, these people are getting really good information that pertains to them where I'm not having to hop on the phone all the time. Sure. It's, and then they have, they also have a resource to go back to. So we started the weekly email, the weekly email grew into kind of a lengthy thing, which was not, not what I wanted it. So we ended up making it a blog in January of 2022. And then after, so right about, and I wrote down these numbers, um, when we started the blog, I was at like two transactions a month, I guess. So, so for reference, I'm anywhere between eight to 10 million, um, and anywhere between 30 to 34 transactions a year. So, I mean, like I do, I do. Okay. Um, and so we were refer we were right around an average of two transactions per month prior to starting this blog that raised mm -hmm. it to three transactions. So again, transactions, not necessarily like what I was after, but what was really cool when we tracked the volume. So my volume prior to the blog was 730,000 a month, essentially. Um, my volume after the blog, we tracked it 90 days. The volume was 1.3 million a month. So the caliber of client changed because of the education that they were receiving. And that is something that we've done ever since January of 2022, we've put out a weekly blog. And, um, and it continues to feed, um, to feed the business in that way and grow the email list. So as the, as the email list subscribers grew, so did the volume. And so that was something new that we had tried that wasn't me getting on the phone because I wasn't going to do it and, um, and a way to serve them in a way that aligns with our one message. Kelly, what platform do you use for the blogs to go out? Um, I use Squarespace that's tied into KV core, the back end, but then Kartra is our email uh, platform. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. But the, the blog is housed on Squarespace. KV Core and then Kartra. Okay, great. Yeah. And I, I think this is interesting. Like, so here, here's, here's, here she is making, understanding her strengths and her weaknesses, right? So she's taken a step back globally, said, how can I do this? How can I touch these people? How can I serve these people? And how can I not make all these freaking phone calls? Because I hate to talk to people on the phone, right? Right, Kelly? And so yeah. she's found a solution that that weekly email then turned into her weekly blog. And as a result, look at the volume growth. That's nice money in Kelly Armstrong's pocket, people. <laughs> And Coach Bird says that we all want to make more money. I put it in the comments, right? We all want to make more money. We don't need to make more money. We need to know more people. The people have the money. And that's exactly what Kelly's doing. As she said, as her email list grew, so did her monthly numbers. Yeah, that's so great, Kelly. What an amazing um, example. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, Rob Cabanas, goal, action, try new things, measure. Where are you, Rob? I'm right here. How are you? Hey, whoa, that's not the same guy in the picture, is it? 
caught me in a week where I decided to shave. Those that beard is gone, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was that big of a deal until like I was asking my wife. She's like, you know, the last time you shaved was like 2019. Um, it was like before COVID, so I, I guess it was a bigger deal. My son got completely freaked out. Uh, he's only two, so he's never seen me without a beard. He's screaming. He was just losing his mind. That's awesome. I've never seen you without a beard. Really? I guess not. Yes, yeah. Give That's... it a couple of days. It'll go back. Oh, yeah. And you have a ton of hair, so yeah, yeah. you have I'm no not lacking that. that. That's so awesome. That's well, awesome, hey, though. Thanks to you two for, for coming on. I, I know you had some specific goals when you first started. So sure. would love to hear kind of how you moved forward through that. For sure. Um, and before, can, I don't, Gogo, I think it might be a good idea to ask Kelly, maybe if she could do a training on on how she does her blog, like a real in-depth training, because I'd be very interested in that. Yeah, um, it's not a lot, like you don't hear people building up that kind of revenue and stuff like that using a blog and i think that's very interesting and something that i really don't know about so i'd like yeah to kelly about. would you be open to that because i was thinking the same thing in the background here not only that um of what you are doing right but actually bringing a couple of the blog articles that you think you think that it did best because i think it has to do a lot with what you are saying and how you're yes. saying right 100 percent. there's a yeah, lot absolutely. of things out there in the world that you pay me a hundred thousand dollars i wouldn't sit there to read it right like shoot me now right yeah. so you must be giving them information um that they are they are caring about but you yeah. also must be giving it in a very light yes fun. Yeah. and um yeah, absolutely and full transparency i now outsource that blog so the, it's been able to generate because it was taking me like four hours a week to write all of these, you know, all of these blogs essentially. So now I do have a copywriter that had, that writes them for me and we've moved into using the same format for agents. So I write the agent email and then she's handling the client side. But yeah, um, Kate, to your point, um, the site uh, or my website is um, it, it houses the blog. So if you guys want in the meantime to go check it out, you're you're more than welcome and feel free to subscribe too. Will do. And I'm sorry, did, did you say, did you drop that in the chat for us? I sure will. Thank you, Kelly. That's so amazing. Thanks. Sorry. I just wanted to ask that. Great I idea. Gonna, Lindsay's going to be in touch, Kelly. Thank you so much. With the uh, new chat GPT, it's easier to write blogs ourselves now too. Isn't that amazing? Like you're just writing an article about PITI and two seconds later you have an article you're like, what <laughs> is happening right now? No, I love that idea, right? Like everybody needs to learn um, the the AIs. And uh, I think the only thing with the AI is, is to making it talk like you, right? So in my case, yes. for example, if it's suddenly perfect English, <laughs> I have to, <laughs> yeah, I have to unperfect it a little bit, right? Like I have to put in there a little slang, like I would like, I don't say things like when you say you, I just type the letter U. When you say I see, I just type the letter C, right? Like I would have to go in there and then just take out, and I never say because, I always say cause, right? So I would have to go in there and, and make that chat GPT article sound a little bit more like me, a little bit less perfect English, right? But I agree, you don't have to actually type the article. Let the chat GPT type it for you and you just make it sound more like you. Yeah, with all those key words, right? That's built mm -hmm. in for us. Great stuff. All right, all right, Kabaz. Okay. What yeah, am I I'm, going, I'm going through. Uh, yeah, so my goal was to make 100,000. I mean, I think that's what a lot of agents goal is when uh, they get into this business. 100K is kind of like their the standard of what they want to make. Um, so that was kind of my goal when I got into real estate. And it didn't seem like a daunting task, but it actually, at the time, I mean, you start to do the numbers and you're like, okay, yeah, this could be, this could be difficult. And so the action steps that I decided that I was going to pursue were, was going to be um, social media and video content. And that was what in my market, no other real estate agent, they were doing that at the time. And I just seemed like it was like this, this niche that I could um, take advantage of. And uh, along with Kelly, like I hated calling people. I hated being that salesperson. That's <laughs> that cheesy salesperson that would call people and be like, Oh, how's the weather? And like, I, I could not stand people like that. I hated when people did that to me. So I didn't want to do that. So I had to come up with some other way that I could um, just basically lead generate and, and create value um, by just not being sleazy and, and a salesperson. So uh, that idea was um, social media and video. So basically the the way I started out, I was just kind of just like 
spontaneously doing video. I do a video here and I do a video there and it would just kind of nothing consistent. And basically where I, where I took it was um, I said, you know what, I have to be consistent with this because nothing will work uh, in business or life if you're not consistent with it. So I decided to do two professional videos a week. Uh, and then on top of it, I layered it with um, one, at least one social media post every single day and even on the weekends. And then, um, raw video as well to go with it. So uh, I would just kind of layer in raw video over the week uh, along with the two professional videos. And you, I did that for an entire, really, I did that for 18 months straight um, before I got my first uh, kind of like lead. I know like Sarah was talking earlier, she's been getting leads from social media way quicker than I did. And I told her she's obviously doing something better than I did, but um, it took me 18 months of posting and professional videos and lots of money spent and lots of headache and, and, and everything before I actually got that, that first lead on social media. But once I got it, then it just kind of took off. And I realized like the 18 months of posting and video that I did wasn't wasted. It was all just building this kind of foundation and this brand leading up to this, this point of, I finally got somebody that actually just reached out to me and I didn't have to call or I didn't have to pay or I didn't have to do anything like that for leads and, and bother people. <laughs> and and I like, cause Robbie always talks about the sleazy sales guy, the sleazy <laughs> sale, real estate sales guy. They must be really sleazy up there in Port Huron. Well, I think that's just the perception for a long time. Everybody rolled realtors in with just like used car salesmen. And then people like, like the people at, uh, what was that furniture store you'd go in art van, like you'd go in art van and they would just be like right there. And they'd be like, you know, like, Hey, you look at, and you're like, I'm just looking, you know, but they would just follow you around the store. Like I never wanted to be that type of salesperson. Like I just wanted to be like, I just wanted people to come to me and I didn't want to have to bother people because nobody likes that. You know, we're, we're sold to all day long in every aspect of our life. And I didn't want to be just another person that did that. So. Yeah. No. And, and I love what you shared because I think that the common theme when I spoke to you and Kelly both earlier in the week, not only did you guys kind of roll something into a new activity, right. But you also taught both said the word consistent. You both really said consistent, consistent. And and that's the key too here, right? I mean, we have to be, we have to show the consistency because not everyone sees what we post or what we do. We might, you know, there's life going on outside of that. But I, um, yeah, I tell people all the time, it, like real estate is not hard, but it's hard to be consistent. That's the, that's the biggest thing that um, I'll, I'll give anybody. Like, yeah, anybody can come in and do real estate, but to be consistent with it is the hard part. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, both for Kelly and Rob, when you guys kind of implemented this, this system, at what point did you start to see some results? You know, because oftentimes we start things, right? We don't know if it's working. Like, was it months? Was it weeks? Was it years? I mean, kind of where were you guys? Kelly? I just put it in the chat, um, but I, we started the email in September and I saw results in March. And were your results, the volume increase? Your, your yes. Increase? Yes. yes. Man, that's a good increase, Kelly. For, for me, it was about 18 months before I got the first lead from video content. Um, but it was hard to say because I, I had people that would approach me and be like, oh yeah, we see your video. Like, it's really cool. But I was not getting like, somebody to call me up and be like, Hey, we're ready to buy or ready to list. Um, but it was that 18 months in where I finally, I got an Instagram DM that was like, Hey, we watch your videos. Uh, we're ready to sell our house. And that was it. We like, watched it was like, your videos. That's yeah. so cool. Trust me, that was like, I popped a bottle of champagne that day. Cause it was like, you go through a point where you're like, you're doing all this, this work and this content and you're posting every single day. And you're just like, is this just not working? Like, am I just doing something wrong? Maybe, I don't know. But, um, you, you really start to doubt yourself after you do it for a while and you don't get you know, you don't get that return on it, but, but yeah. and are a, a lot of your leads coming on from uh social media, Rob. Yeah. I would say 90%. Yeah. It's amazing. Can yeah. I, can I say something really quick, please? Because I feel like that when you, when you get to that point, like Robbie was just saying, when you like start doubting yourself and you that, like, when that set sets in, I feel like everyone, you just need to push through because when you get to that point, it's literally just a little bit more, just, sure. you have to push yourself just a little bit more and that's when it hits and then it just takes off and it's, it's amazing. So if you ever get to that point where you're like, it's just, why, why continue? 
it's like this isn't working just keep <laughs> yeah. pushing just keep pushing i tell people yeah. to post through post through it. <laughs> just post, post more like when post, you start having the doubt it. that you need to triple your effort and post three times as much <laughs> I love it. yeah that's, that's awesome. so great that's so great. Well, look, so just in kind of conclude in concluding and wrapping things up, I mean, so here's the thing. Remember, it's proactivity. It's slowing down to speed up. It's slowing down to speed up. And that requires doing those things. Sarah was talking about Kelly, Rob, right? Like, like putting a strategic plan together. What's your end game? What does it look like? Mind map it, vision board. Do a big global approach. Who do I want to be in my business? How do I want to be in my business? Chunk it down, as we say in coaching, and then just be open to trying new things. And you've got to measure. You don't know if things are working unless you measure. So goal, action, try new things and measure. And then just kind of in wrapping up, here's what I want to say. You have no right to complain unless you do this type of exercise. No right. So if you want to grow, remember your business grows to your personal growth self, right? So you can't complain until you've tried this exercise at least. I mean, let's see, Kelly was September to March, six months. Robbie was 18 months, right? So you need to do that. And also give yourself some grace and some space, you know, allow yourself an opportunity to grow. You know, remember as, as kids, when we were learning things as youngsters, it takes time, right? And think about your kids. It takes time for them to learn things. Give yourself that generosity of spirit to adopt new habits and to allow yourself to grow. And then just in closing, I can't say this enough, but growing yourself will grow your business. Anyone want to chat about anything before we wrap up? Comments, considerations? Jennifer Anderson has her hand up. I kind of thought that was still there from the very first moment. Yeah, I think so too. I think she raised yeah. it and then it just didn't go back down. I love it. Thanks, Kate Garza. Thank All you, right, Kate. Well, hey, guests, th thank you so much for coming. You know, we do this open training once a month. We always have interesting topics that we're sharing with our community. As you can see, we engage with each other and we brainstorm and, um, you know, we try to help each other grow professionally and personally here. Any last comments? Can, from I, can I add on to that? So last week we were up in Michigan yeah. and I think it, we are trying to, it's almost like we are talking about this subject, the importance of measuring so often that sometimes like, oh my gosh, here we are again, consistency, reliability, whatever. Right. But, um, what Kurt said on stage, I think it's so true, is that most of the time people don't track because they don't want to be faced with the results. Right, if you don't track it, you're like, well, I kind of know that I'm slacking there, but I don't want to see it. I don't want to stare it in the face in the mirror, right? And that's sometimes why people don't track it because you know you're slacking there. And you don't want to see That's it. You don't want, yeah. you don't want reality to uh, stay right back at you, the person yeah. in the mirror, right? Or um, know that you have to do something about it now, because now that you see these numbers, now you got to do something. What? You're just going to let it, you know, you suck now and here's the proof. So you're just going to let it No, Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, well, I only do two transactions. Do I really need to track that? Yeah. You know why? Because when you're going to be doing 200, you're going to look back, you're like, whoa, look at how far I came. Well, and I remember when I, my very first year in real estate and I got my, my very first commission check was $4,000. And I had never, ever, ever in my life made that much on one check ever, <laughs> like ever. Like I thought I like hit the jackpot on my $4,000. Oh, that's and amazing. Then, and then I didn't sell anything for a while. And then my very first year in EXP, without even really trying, when I actually went in, because my husband said, well, how much did you make? I'm, I don't know. I'm just working real estate. I'm just doing a thing. And when I put it down on paper and realized, now, mind you, I had never made more than $18 an hour at any job, 
when I was going for my college degree, even for being in the medical field for 20 years, I was never going to make over 40 grand doing that job with a degree. So in my mind, my mindset was, okay, I'm never going to make more than 40 grand. I just kind of faced it. Well, my first year of really putting in a little effort, I did $60,000 and I, yeah. thought, I thought I was a millionaire and that, <laughs> and that was only 10 transactions. And that okay. was like from August to December when I really, really looked at my numbers and I put it on my stupid Excel spreadsheet before I had QuickBooks. And I thought, well, if I can do that from August to December in that little bit of effort, what's it going to look like when I really dig in and really try? Exactly. And when I changed that mindset, that's when my I got my first lead on YouTube, 1.2 million. And then this week I got reached out and another lady said, my dad wants you to list his office and it's 1.2 million. That's amazing. Congratulations. So, so that's, that's the positive so side of, of tracking, right? There's a negative side of staring you in the face. The positive side of tracking is also your hard work and your work ethic. It's going to stare you back in the face. You're like, yeah, I did that. I did that. I did $60,000, right? I also want you to write this down. That what gets celebrated gets duplicated. So celebrate your successes, right? Celebrate no matter how small it is, if it's big for you, like if it's $4,000, but that's the biggest amount of money you have ever made, like that's a big deal, right? And now that is a new standard. Now that 4,000 that you've never paid before, now it's like, holy shit, that's the base. Like that's what we are starting from now on is 4,000 and very minimum. It's going to only go up from here, right? right? So what gets celebrated gets duplicated. And so if you can, maybe go and get that, Macy, maybe go and get that very first, um, oh, Kobe just got home. Maybe to get that very first commission check, print it and frame it. Right. Oh, great. I, have yeah. it. I have one of these here because this was a very big deal for me. In case you guys can see it from very far, that's a 1099. This is my very first 1099 that was over seven digits. Wow. And, and I got two of these in the same year. So I've never had one. And then I got two in that year. Awesome. Wow. Right. So things like that, I always print because this is the first of something that was so impossible for me to even see in my future. But now this is the base. Yeah. Right. Because if you know how to do it, it's like riding the bike. That's right. If you know how to do it once, you know how to do it twice. But remind yourself sometimes. So when I come in and sometimes I see that, I'm like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> That's right. Nice. Give yourself a little pat. Yeah, exactly. Give yourself That's a awesome. little pat on the back. So it reminds you when sometimes you are so down and sometimes the world, you feel like the world is against you. I look over there and I'm like, well, it's like riding a bike. If I knew how to do that, then I sure freaking know how to do it again. Yeah, that's so yep. great. So celebrate your successes because it will give you that little oomph of like, I can do this. It makes you feel good. Right. And give, because we are in the industry, guys, and nobody's calling you to tell you how awesome you are today. <laughs> Maybe we need to start a call chain. You need, well, that would be great too, right? But you're busy making awesome. money, right? But also, I want you to learn to love on yourself, right? Because it is hard of everything that's going on in the industry. And we are in an industry that it's kind of lonely. We are 1099ers. We are, um, uh, contractors, right? Like we are not employees. You're not going to get a certificate of a, a participation this year, right? And a, no. you're not getting potluck for your birthday in the office because there is no office, <laughs> right? So you have to kind of learn to like love on yourself and celebrate yourself for your successes because what gets celebrated gets duplicated. And then the duplication comes in the next thing you know, your $4,000 base is an $8,000 base because it duplicates, right? right. So be hard on yourself for where you're slacking because that's what's going to light the fire under your tush to take action. And then be nice to yourself for when you finally achieved it so you can enjoy it with a glass of wine or take a day off and get a massage and put your phone face down for a day and be like, even if I, I don't have to answer my phone today, I'm making that money. I'm good. I worked hard. I deserve that. You guys can do this. Business is a lot of self growth. I thought. <laughs> I don't even know what I thought. I did, Well, I can tell you what I did think. I certainly did not think that being successful is this much of soul searching. Oh. I didn't think it. 
I don't, I, I don't know if I never stopped to think of like, not until I started facing my lacks, right? Why don't I have that? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have the same results when I do this, when somebody doing the same thing and getting 20 times the results, right? Mm -hmm. Because we can't, if you're, think of it this way. In my first year of real estate, guys, I made $16,000. The person who made $16,000 cannot, could have not possibly made the 3 million last year. Impossible. It's a totally different. I don't even know if I can find my 29 year old version of me inside of me. Right? Like we have changed so much. Like Tony Robbins says it so well. If you think about it, he says, is the person who was a brand new one day old baby, the one day old Robbie Kabaz, is that the same social security number? Yes. Is that the same DNA? Yes. Is it the same name? Yes. Is it the same fingerprint? Yes. Is it the same person? No. No. How about the person who went to kindergarten and the person who went to college and, the, and then you became a father and then you did real estate and then you've been doing real estate? Like, are you even the same person that you were when you got licensed in that exact moment when you were so freaking excited you got a real estate license? Is that the same Ravi Kabaz? No. Hell no. <laughs> Can you even find that Ravi Kabaz? No. Could have that Ravi Kabaz day one with that real estate license in your hand do and achieve what you achieve today? No. What is the difference? Mindset. Community. Yeah. And yeah. Community yeah, too. I mean, the people are important, yeah. but the mindset is what chooses those people mm -hmm. yeah. who you allow to be in your life, right? So really business and your level of success is your mindset, is mm -hmm. the training, is of how much you have learned and how much of what you have learned you implemented and how much you have changed yourself of how you see yourself. Like you remember when Macy said she saw herself that she's never going to make more than $40,000 a year. Right. Mm -hmm. She made 18 bucks an hour. And then her first check was 4,000. She was like, hold on a minute. Who is this Macy? I don't know this Macy. Is This is new. This is not the Macy that I've been for the last however many years you lived at that time. Right. Right. You have to look about that. It's really our mindset that's going to take us to the next level. Business is mindset. There's a lot of soul searching and dark hours by yourself and reflections in the mirror and looking at spreadsheets and it's looking at back, it's staring back at you and you're like, fuck, <laughs> it's me. I have to learn something. God is trying to tell me something, right? So every time you have something hard or something's not working, that's a lesson that you have not learned yet. So if there's I a part that too. but yeah. that I said I believe that that one too. It keeps repeating itself until it's finally learned. Yes. And as soon as you learn it, you move on. You'll pretty much never have that problem again. Unless you stop implementing what you learn. Then you're going to be faced with the same problem again, right? So what I want you to do when you're doing these spreadsheets and when you're tracking your work and the end result, it's going to stay right back at you. That's why most people don't want to track it because they don't want to be faced with reality. And when it's staring right back at you, you have two options. Do I want to be faced with the same end result next year? Or do I want to learn this lesson? Because if not, I'm going to have the same end result. Either way, it's pain. Pain of having the same end result or maybe being broke for another year. Or pain of facing the idea that I suck at this, I really need to learn this, 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 and this, so then I'm not gonna be in this place ever again. It's, it's pain. Either way, you are choosing your pain. Which pain do you want? Yeah. But it was very surprising to me to realize how much of success is mindset. And the next book and the next event and the right people in your place and the systems and the pro like we are getting an Airbnb guys. I don't know anything about short term rentals. I know absolutely freaking lutely nothing. Oh, I've so never worked hard. with a short term rental investor in my life. I never had to run numbers on a short term rental for anybody. I, I never had to figure out the systems. I never had you name it. Right. I don't know. I don't even know what I don't know. That's how much I don't know. So the next few weeks, guess what I'm doing? First of all, I made a post. I reached out to my tribe. 
and my tribe is amazing. And I got hundreds of messages. So the last few days I've been reading hundreds of messages and I started a page in my notebook to pretty much starting to write down all of the short-term rental, like all of the short-term rental ideas that they're giving me. They're talking about apps and they're talking about websites and they're talk giving me podcasts to watch and YouTube channels to follow and all of those things, right? And then I'm going to start going down on that list. And guess how you learn? I remember this came to me one time. It's like, you arrive to this new thing, right? Like, so what is the newest thing that you realize that it just exists and you're kind of studying it right now? So for me, it's Airbnb, right? So I'm opening the short-term rental door and I go into the short-term rental room and I'm start looking around. I'm like, oh, I don't know that existed. Oh, that's super cool. Like, oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. So let me read this book and go to this event and listen to this podcast. And so now I'm on the short-term rental Airbnb room, right? I'm figuring it out. And then as I'm looking around in that room, I realize, oh, hold on a minute, there's another door. And then I open that door, right? And now that door is, I don't know, syndications. And suddenly I'm in another room, but I would have never got to that room if I didn't go to the short-term rental room, right? So you have to look at it, that the opportunity that you are in right now, that is your next stepping stone. Yeah. That stepping stone is going to open up the next stepping stone that you didn't even know existed because it's kind of like building a house. You need the foundation first, right? If you put a roof and there is no walls and no foundation, it's gonna fall apart, it's not a house. So it's everything that you learn. It's just going to be the next stepping stone of what life and God or what you believe in is preparing you for. But that opportunity, if you didn't show up for this opportunity, you're not going to get the next one. True. Because it comes like this, right? So I'm going to figure this one out and I'll go do that. And next time I'm going to probably figure out a couple of long-term rentals, right? Because I should own one of those. Um, we are starting to bring in, so I, um, I'm bringing in one of our Team Google experts to do our short-term rental Airbnb training for us because nobody teaches us investment. Be a realtors, guys. Actually, let's do the study right here. Let me put it on gallery so I can see everybody. Turn your cameras on so I can ask you a question so we can do our own study. Oh, hi, Christian Fusion. I haven't seen you in so long. Congrats for being a grandma. I think you just got a new one, right? A couple of months ago. That's our ninth one and the 10th is on the way already. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, sorry, not, not being a brand new grandma, but congrats on being a grandma again, <laughs> I, I meant. Um, so everybody turn your cameras on so we can do our research really quick. And hi, Jennifer Anderson. I met you last week. By the way, Jennifer Anderson is super dull. Um, I had no idea. Okay, so here's the, the question I want to do. We all licensed, right? We all have real estate licenses. That's what we do for a living. We all live in a home. Hopefully you have real estate, right? Now raise your hand outside of the home that you live in if you own real estate. Short-term rental, long-term rental. So we have Missy and we have how many of you? One, two, three, four. I'm actually turning mine in too. Five, six. Am I missing? So six, if I'm uh, seven, if I calculated it right, seven out of 43. Maybe eight, maybe I didn't see Rosalia's hand. So think of it this way, like maybe that's a quarter, a quarter of a realtor own real, own real estate outside of their primary property that they live in, right? So let's change that number for ourselves. We work way too freaking hard to learn to sell real estate to others so we can help them make money, but we are not doing the same thing for ourselves. Right. Like, how silly is that? I mean, I guess a heart surgeon doesn't do surgery on themselves, hopefully, right? But, but still, hopefully we use another example, but I feel like us realtors, we should own real estate. If anybody should own investment properties, that should be us. We, so we have the relationships. To... Yeah, we have the relationships, we have the connections, we have the access. Yes, but they don't teach us how to, you know, they teach us how to make money, maybe not even that, but they don't teach us what to do with the money after. So I really want to use this year in 2023 to start to learn things of how to create generational wealth for ourselves and our families, right? So that we don't have to be training on how to sell the next real estate 50 freaking years from now. Hopefully all of us can be like, you know what? I did my time. If you need me to come back and teach other realtors how to do it, I would love to do that, but I don't have to do it for the rest of my life, right? Maybe there is freedom for us. Back in the past, there was no retirement for realtors. Let's be the first ones that we have retirement. And we can say, you know what? I'm retiring. 
and do that through the avenue that we spent 10, 20, 30 years, real estate, best, best place to be, right? And to be building wealth. So this year, I really want to start looking at bringing in the experts of how to do that, how to invest into syndications, how to invest into long-term rentals, short-term rentals, maybe how to even get the funds, how to work yourself up to getting your first real estate investment, how to find them, how to run the numbers, how to make sure they're profitable. I don't freaking know how to run Airbnb numbers. I don't freaking know. Right? But guess what? I'm going to figure it out. Best way of figuring it out is putting yourself into it. My friend, Dwayne and I, like we were like those buyers regret, right? We, we, we made the offer, decided to make the offer. And then on the way home, driving home for the hour, we were convincing each other to walk away. <laughs> and I was like, this is so stupid. We were just scared, right? Because you've never done it. You have to do it so you can finally be like, oh, I know how to do that. I have to do it a couple of times, right? So let's build wealth this year so that we know what to do with our money. And then continuously teaching back, right? Like looking back and teaching the ones that who are two steps behind. So if you feel like you have knowledge on any of these subjects that I have talked about before, like Christine Fusion, I know you do, right? Because you have how many doors? Um, I have 25 rental properties right now, but we also have flip projects going on. And yeah, we could share our, how we do our numbers and those kinds of things. Yeah. So how we got started. How we got started. I mean, I, I'm already, yeah, as you're saying that, like, which way, are, is it worth taking out some of your, um, your stock money, cashing out? Are you going to make a bigger return on some income properties or leave uh, it? That Let's talk about that. <laughs> that reminds me, hopefully I'm the only one in the company, but you might want to check your stock accounts today because something happened and it's not there. Uh, and nor is Dwayne's. So I don't know if just the two of us that something happened to our stock accounts, but maybe you guys can all log into your EXP stocks and see if yours is there. And hopefully yours is there, but mine is not. Um, but yeah, if, Christine, if you don't mind, and you and Carl, would you like to, you guys do a training of where you started, the mindset around investing, what you, what lessons you learned, that kind of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. We've definitely awesome. learned a lot. <laughs> awesome. So let's, um, Lindsay, let's reach out to her and, and set that up. And really, that's what I want to be, start doing. Like, I always share my knowledge, right? Everything that I learn, I try to like, just keep giving back because you don't know who that next person is who needs to hear it. And um, I think that's where we need to be start heading this way. You're right. Don't get me wrong. We still do all of our trainings and everything, but I think we need to start heading into building wealth and learning how to do that. Not just how to do the next real estate transaction, because we can be, we can go blue in the face and trying to do that. There's a million ways to do that. It's constantly going to change anyway of how we do real estate. So I think I'm excited to, uh, you know, as we are learning to bring in the experts and we can all learn and grow in our in our being. So thank you so much for being here. Cheryl, do you have a question? I'm sorry. No. Okay. Well, I, thank I you have a question for, for Robert. Yes, go ahead. Hey, Robert, how you doing? Hey, in your, in your opinion, what is the best advice that you can give to everybody here who's not that active on social media with videos? Because I've seen you, how you grew you know, from not taking a video to like have your own uh, crew or a guy mm -hmm. do that video and all that. What What's the first step that you took to be consistent and to, you know, get to YouTube and all that? Sure. You, um, it's honestly, it's just not overthinking it. Everybody just overthinks the, the whole concept of video. And number one, uh, video, number one, people get stuck because they don't know what to put on video, right? Um, there's so many different, like you can put your everyday life. Like the reason shows like million dollar listing do so well is because you're seeing the drama of somebody like a realtor's life, right? They don't really care so much about the houses. They care about the drama of the person. So just show your everyday life. Like Gogo's goes really good at that, right? She shows you exactly what she wants you to see, but you're also getting an inside view of her life and what she's doing to run her businesses and everything like that. So uh, people just want like re reality TV. Uh, the other thing is like for more real estate related, the our clients and our consumers don't understand the general terminology of what we do as agents or like what's an inspection what's an appraisal uh what to do at a closing what do i bring to a showing all of these things are video topics that you can do in less than two minutes so um we all have a 4k camera on our iphones um so we don't need a big fancy camera to come and do that so shoot it 
Um, you can uh, edit it yourself if you want. You can hire somebody to edit it for you. Every time I pay money to have a video edited, I just think that I'm investing in myself and my brand. That's the way I look at it. I don't look at it as money spent or money where I could have been doing it. My, my time is not best spent editing video. I don't know how to do it. I'll never be good at it. So I just give it to somebody else that can make me look good. Um, other than that, just, just to keep it simple, just don't overthink it, guys. Everybody gets so wrapped up in how you look and how you sound. Um, and it's And that's normal human nature, right? Just don't get um, in your own head about it because you get so wrapped up, well, I need this and I don't have this. And then you just don't end up doing anything. So just shoot video and post it. That's it, man. It's really, it's really the biggest thing. And be authentic. Be yourself. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Make it funny. If you mess up, who cares? Leave it in there. Um, my, my best videos were the ones where I messed up and we just left it in there and people went nuts for it. So that's it. And anytime anybody ever needs any advice or help with with anything video, feel free, feel free to reach out. I'll help any of you. What, Thank you. Did, Thank you. Say something to it also the, on just add up to that. You know, the one thing I was the same way, right? I was trying to do videos and I was like scared to do it. I was doing the video and then uh, stop and then kind of go back again. I should have my first video to put it out there when I started about nine months ago on real estate. Um, it took me seven hours to post a video. It was like seven or nine o'clock when I posted, right? And I was waiting. I, I thought I did an amazing job and I was waiting for everybody to go out there and look at it. And it was not that way. And my video that took like only one or two seconds is the one that did better than the other ones. And I was like, okay. So what I started doing, it just go live. Because if you go live, even if you if you feel like you can't talk and you uh, struggle, but still that's going to be you. It will give you that that encourage to keep uh, making videos so if you want to get a little better just shoot it out there or just do live videos and just keep going because on live video you can't stop you can't do not you just have to continue and and doing it so yeah that that's a hundred percent um true and and we did live video for two years straight i did a live video every single wednesday where i went live on facebook and i answered any real estate question that anybody had for me and number one it showed confidence it showed that i would get on video and i would i was ready and able to answer any possible real estate question that you had and number two it just showed consistency and also we had a production so it looked nice and and when you start to do professional video people start to associate you with success because they they assume that professional video costs a lot of money right and so they're assuming that you're doing well and they want to work with people that are that are successful they don't know that maybe I didn't sell any homes this year but I sure look like I sold a bunch of homes and I look like I'm successful so um that's one thing I think that that will really help you and and, and one more thing I'll say to piggyback off that would be like stop worrying about if people watch your video I don't care if people watch my videos or not um, and most of the time I guarantee you 90% of the time they're not watching your video but what I do care is that my video shows up in their feed at least once a day and they go hey that's Robert he's a real estate agent and then they scroll past but at least I got him one time in the brain that day of I'm a professional and I show up every single day and maybe they watched it, maybe they didn't, but. That's exactly what I do. I go for yep. a pop in the head. Yep. Yep. Because if they really go watch this one, I just want to be an option next time they think about real estate. I don't want them to think of anybody else besides a go-go chick that sells real estate. That's, a, and then, you know, when they're just cruising with like one eye open, they're half asleep, they're like, oh, there's go-go again. There's another selfie. Oh, there's go-go again. She did something. What did she do today? Oh, okay, whatever. There's go go again. That's all I need. I need them just to see that go go check again. Like got, just be, just be an option in their head. I've got a lender friend who's probably shot twenty videos right now, like like professional videos that he hasn't posted one because he wants to change something in every single one. I'm like, dude. He's like, well, I'll just wait and I'll post the next one. I'm like, just post them all. Just post them. Who cares? Just get them out there and move on to the next one. Like, why are you so worried about like, oh, I'm going to change my voice in this one little section? It's like, oh my gosh, no. Who cares? Like, you guys no. are so anal about. Hey, they're watching it anyway because they watch you film. I as well give them a reason to watch exactly. it. Right. So yeah. I'm like, oh, did I say something super stupid in there? Like. Most of the time, guys, for me is the English, right? So words, I sometimes use words that kind of sound like the work I'm supposed to be using, <laughs> right? So they're like, oh, what she meant to say is this. I don't care what they think. No. I don't care what they think. What they think, it doesn't pay the bills. Right. You can never go for perfection. Nobody was perfect ever in the history of mankind. Perfect doesn't exist. Something that's perfect for me, you would be like, oh, that's hideous. Right. There isn't such a thing. Yeah. yeah. I think we killed it today, guys. We are totally half an hour over the hour. So thank you so much for staying on with our soul searching here.
Um, work on yourselves, right? Wherever you are, whatever you need to work on, you know what you need to work on. It's staring you in the face, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. it's, we, we all have that, 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 uh, that list, right? But you know, as soon as you figured it out, life will stop throwing those pebbles. I always say that God throws you pebbles and if you don't listen, he's going to throw a brick. <laughs> so, so learn the lessons on the pebble size so then he doesn't have to like, he doesn't have to throw bricks. And every time you've learned a lesson, now you earned knowledge. Now you're ready for that next level and that next level and that next level. And then one day you're like, F it, I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> it works so hard so then we don't have to work so hard, right? Well, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you for showing up and sharing your knowledge. If you spend the time and you took some notes, look down at them and say, yep, I need to do that. And then go do it. And then we'll meet again next Wednesday and we we'll learn something new and then we work on that. I mean, I just want to say, Savannah, I see you here all the time and I want to know, I want you to know that your hard work doesn't go unnoticed. Like the person that you were, that's Savannah. When did you join us? Two years-ish? Um, two years ago, actually, the end of this month. Yeah. I can tell you the person who joined two years ago, I don't even know if you can find that Savannah inside of you somewhere. I don't either. I remember when you joined and I remember the phone calls and helping you get acclimated <laughs> and you're like, I just don't even know. I have no idea. And now I, I need to get a full-time VA just so she can like and comment on everything that you're doing and posting. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad. Because <laughs> you are doing so amazing. Like you're a different human. Yes. Well, a VA helps a lot. So, and then so maybe you want to, you want to share a little bit, maybe some of those fundamentals that you learned in the last two years. Um, to changed. Yes. I, um, just jumped all in and actually last April I did come gone completely real estate. So before I did construction work, we have a concrete construction company and I tried to do both and it's impossible to be successful in real estate when you have another job. And so I just went all in and got the VA with hey Savannah. Uh, I'm going to stop you there because that's another lesson you need to learn. You can absolutely be successful in multiple things while you're doing real estate. Well, but you have to give 110% with everything you do. Yeah. Like, and you have to have the systems and the people, right? Like you can't, are you right? If there's only you and you don't have the systems and the people, it is impossible to do two different things. Yeah. But after, if you do this right, I just want you to watch what you say, because what you think is what you bring. Right. So if you believe that it's impossible to be successful in real estate and do something else, do I have nine companies? You can do it all, but it is a different mindset. Right. And you're going to have to have people and systems in places. But I think you're doing amazing, but you already have people, right? You got VAs and through yes. VAs now you have systems. So the only thing that you need to change now that you can do it as long as you have that. Well, I don't want to do it, I guess is how I should. <laughs> Cause I'm doing what I love. I not doing what my dad loved, you know? Yeah. So that, that's the difference. Yeah. So as but, long as you don't, if you don't want to do anything else about that, I'm totally happy. Yeah. You live, you know, you do you and you live your life, but if there's anything else of interest for you, like maybe you say, I want to do investments or short-term rentals, or I want to do um, coaching a basketball team and be successful at, right? Whatever that thing is, I just want you to know you can do it. And you just have to have the people in the system. Yeah. Well, and that's, I've made tons of changes and done a lot of things that are very uncomfortable for me. So, and it has made such a difference. So, so what are those things that were super duper uncomfortable? And talking, like teaching and talking and, and um, getting in front of people. And I've done that. Um, getting on video. I video myself all the time now and it drives my daughter crazy and I love it. So, <laughs> love it. and how so, did your business change? Uh, completely. Um, three times as much, you know, big uh, change. And I'm going to icon this year. Woo Congratulations. Yeah. So, so three times more money or three times more work? More money. I love that. Awesome. Yeah. I'm super proud of you. Like I can see your hard work and I can see the results and I can see how it changed you, right? That, that shy Savannah and that quiet Savannah now is constantly on video and I absolutely freaking love it. Yes, yes, yes.
That way, it, that your bank account is seeing the end result too. Oh, big time. It's crazy, the change. It's just amazing. That's so. awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you everyone for being here. You see, um, Savannah, did you uh, achieve that in your comfort zone? No, not at all. Right. It was so, yes. I'll be the six says that if you do what's hard, no, if you do what's easy, life's going to be hard. If you do what's hard, life's going to be easy. Yes. Yes. And so, all that has come to me, people just come to me. Like people call me and I see people places. I had one guy who said, I'm not even wanting to buy real estate, but I keep seeing your videos and I'm like, well, do I need to buy something? Do I need to buy it? I'm like, yeah, you do. Come on, let's buy some. That's awesome. I love it. Congratulations. You're doing awesome. Thank but thank you everyone for being here. Let's do this again. Yeah. Bye. Go do something you, uncomfortable. <laughs> Bye.